So the question is, why do people demand health services? Now, it seems like a stupid question because obviously if we want to be healthy. Um, now, that's only one reason why we demand health services. And uh, I'm going to try to recapture the story by, by Grossman uh, in this uh, very brief uh, review. Um, Grossman tells us that the demand for health is derived from our uh, from an investment motive. So the key here is like when you demand health, it's like an investment. Um, that's the first insight. It's an investment. Why do you invest in health? Well, of course, you want to have health in itself. So that's one reason uh, in itself. Uh, but the second reason, so in itself, the second reason is you want health because good health will give you an ability to go out and work and earn money and get other stuff that you want. So it's not in itself, it's just because you need health in order to get other goods. So, so it's more like the investment motive here. Okay, and that's the key insight in the Grossman model. You're thinking about the future. So you want to invest in health so you can earn money, for example, and then buy stuff. Now, if this is the correct theory, what kind of implications does it have? And um, what kind of predictions will, will we get? So in order to look at that, let's draw one graph. In this graph, you're going to invest in health like a standard investment good. Um, and you have the marginal cost of investing and the marginal benefit here. And then you have the quantity of your health, the health stock. It's important this is health stock. It's not the demand for health services. This is th the level of health that you want. And in order to get that level of health, then you have to invest in health services and buy health services. But this is the stock you want, how much health you want. Okay. So how much will you, you, will you want? Well, look at the cost of investing in health and look at the benefits. And look at it as a standard investment problem. What is the cost? Well, the cost of investing in something is just the value that you lose for example if you buy a car what's the cost of buying that car if i buy a car for ten thousand dollars the cost is not really ten thousand dollars the cost is the money i lose because i did when i buy it for ten thousand i'm just transferring the money from my bank account into the car i haven't lost ten thousand dollars because now i have a car which is worth something so what i actually lose is just what i could have had if i had spent that money on something else um so i could have left the money in the bank for example then i could have an interest rate so that's the real loss. Uh, in addition to that, I lose money every year because of depreciation, because the car loses value. And that's the same here. You have an interest rate here, and you have depreciation here. That's the cost of investing um, in health here, for example. Um, so every year, you could have done something else, but you could also invest in health. And if you invest in health, it's going to go down. The value of that is going to go down every single time period. So that's the cost. Cost of capital, for example, you can say that. So then what is the benefit? Well, the benefit curve will look slightly different. The benefit will be start out high. If, if you have no investment in health, the first investment, you will just pick the, the investment that gives you the highest return. So you'll have high invest, high return on investment in the beginning, but then eventually you'll you do all the easy and cheap things, and, and then the return will go down. So when you have a high health stock, the return to your investment will be low. So that's the marginal efficiency uh, marginal efficiency of investment. So where will you be? Well, at this point. Your uh, gain is higher than the cost, so you'll go on investing until you reach this point. So that's where you want to be. That's where the cost is equal to the benefit, and that's the optimal health you're aiming for. So that seems like a, a simple story. Um, if you consider health as an investment good, then this is how, how you would think if you're a rational individual. What kind of implications? This is how, what kind of predictions will we get? Well, let's look at three predictions. What will happen in high age, for example, if age goes up? Well, if age goes up, 
than the discounting. You can assume that the people with high age, they, they lose health more rapidly. So this, which means that this curve will go up and you'll be here. And the key is that you have a lower optimal level of health. So as age goes up, the level of health that is optimal goes down. Now that's not the same as saying that the demand for health services goes down as age goes up. That's different because um, you may need a lot more health services to maintain this lower level of health. So the, the demand for health services may go up, but the optimal stock, the level of health is, is going down. So, so this theory predicts, and of course you observe this, that people with high age will have lower level of health. Um, second prediction, what happens if um, you increase education? Well, if you assume that people that are highly educated also are very efficient when it comes to exploiting the information they get when they invest in something, like they, uh, they can use the information uh, better when it comes to improving their health, well, then they will invest more in health. So highly educated people will have a higher optimal health stock than other people. That's a prediction from this theory, assuming that they can exploit the information better. And that's also something you observe. Now, there are many other implications here. For example, if the price increases or what happens if wages increases? Well, that's actually not obvious because if the wage goes up, then um, it's good for you to invest more in health in one sense because uh, you need to be healthy in order to go to work. Um, and with a higher wage, it's more important to go to work, so you need to invest more in health. Um, but the problem is, in order to invest in health, you also have to take time off work sometimes. And that's costly. And higher wages will make that more costly. So you have to trade those two effects against each other. So it's ambiguous, but most people say it's more beneficial to invest more in health. So that's, that's the theory, and it, you can see it, it conforms to some of our predictions. But some people will say, well, that's not very surprising. There could be some problems there. Uh, but that's for a different lecture, all the problems with this theory. That's the basic theory. You, you look upon the demand for health as an investment. And that's the Crossman model in one per brief lecture.